Welcome viewers once again to TV Box Stop, the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and related accessories. What I have for you today is an HD 1080p Android TV OS projector from Tangula, and we have seen Tangula boxes featured on this channel, and now they have ventured into providing their services in this first projector model. For those of you who don't know who or what Tangula is, then I urge you to do your own research because there is no way YouTube is going to allow me to show or even mention anything relating to their service. So in this video, for the sake of this channel and to comply with YouTube's community guidelines, I will stay away from that kind of activity and instead, I will only focus on its hardware performance, display quality and Android features. So stay tuned, that's up next. And welcome back. So in this package contains the Y1 model itself. You get one infrared remote control, one AC power cable, a mini tripod, a pack of lens cleaning wet and dry wipes, and a multi-language user manual. There is no HDMI cable included in this package. So the design of this model is very minimalistic and portable with a fabric covering to the front with an IR sensor, the Tangular branding, and its projector lens surrounded by an aluminum bezel. The fabric to the front also covers its intake vent. To its rear has an LED power button, a headphone jack, one USB 2.0 port, one HDMI input display port, its AC power socket, its exhaust vent, and the grill for its internal speaker. To the top is where you will find its focus adjustment wheel and this one does not have the force feedback feature. There are no manual control buttons and it comes with a carrying strap which makes it look trendy and portable at the same time. And to its base, it has four anti-skid rubber feet and a screw hole for mounting to the included mini tripod or any full-size tripod that has a hot seat. There is no kickstand or screw holes for mounting to a ceiling. So when you start up this projector, it starts like an Android TV box with a tangular splash screen and animation for a few seconds, then you're taken directly to the launcher. So this launcher is very much the same as your standard TV box launcher, consisting of these large icons to access major features and apps such as the Aptoid App Store, YouTube, Netflix, and File Explorer. To the left, you have Miracast, Airplay, and the settings area shortcuts. And below, you have a shortcuts bar for apps installed. The included infrared remote does have good reception, however, you can connect a Bluetooth Air Mouse, Air Mouse with a dongle, or gamepad controller and navigate its launcher. The firmware used in this projector in the settings area features a dual band 2.4GHz plus 5GHz Wi-Fi and it also has a Wi-Fi hotspot feature. It comes with a Bluetooth 5.0 and here I've already connected my Bluetooth gamepad. Under picture mode, you have a global zoom screen size adjustment and you can stretch your display vertically and horizontally individually. You can reset all zoom adjustments and the last option is your projection direction feature. Under keystone settings, you can set your vertical and horizontal keystone to adjust automatically or adjust manually. You have a 4D corner keystone correction, and you can reset all keystone adjustments. Under general settings, you can change its wallpaper from a wide selection of preloaded images, but you can't use your own custom images. You can change your time zone to suit your region. You can change the virtual keyboard. You have a power on feature to resume power after an outage and it has an auto fan speed feature that automatically adjusts the speed depending on the projector's temperature, or you can set a fan speed manually. Under signal settings, you can select a signal source, where you would like the projector to boot up into its main menu or the HDMI source input. It has HDMI CC options and HDMI audio ARC option. You have sound options, where you can enable or disable ketone sounds. You have a sound boost option, and you can select between standard and vivid sound quality. 
Under Language Settings, you have 31 various languages to choose from. Under Apps Management is where you can access your standard Android apps settings. Under System Settings, you can restore to factory defaults and it's where you can also view the device's info. And under System Updates, you can update the firmware via USB or you have OTE updates. This projector's firmware is the Android TV OS version, so let's take a look at its system and hardware information. The chipset is manufactured by MediaTek and it runs on 2GB of DDR3 RAM and 32GB of internal storage. Its Bluetooth version is 5.0. Its CPU is the MediaTek MT5862 and it's a quad-core Cortex A53 processor with a CPU clock speed of 1.5GHz configured in 32-bit mode. Its GPU is the Mali G31 with a refresh rate of 60Hz and with OpenGL version 3.2 support. It has a dual band 2.4 plus 5GHz AC network adapter. Its operating system is Android 9 Pi, Android TV OS version and it's not rooted. Where it shows rooted here is incorrect. Under devices, it shows that its GPU has Vulkan API version 1.1 support. Under temperature, it idles around 100 degrees Celsius, and this is expected because projectors run much hotter than Android TV boxes due to its lumens. And for decoders, it comes with all of the decoders for the playback of 4K HDR videos, such as H.264 and HEVC, but it does not have the AV1 decoder. And for audio, it has AC3 Dolby Digital Decoder, DTS Audio, and Audio Pass-Through Decoder. And that's its system and hardware information. For those interested in watching their favorite paid subscription service such as Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, and HBO Max would be a bit disappointed because this projector only has Google Wide Vine Level 3. It does not need HDCP protection because it does not have an HDMI output port. However, in order to show paid subscription services in HD, it must have Google Wide Vine Level 1, which it does not have. You can, however, install your favorite paid subscription streaming app, but it will be limited to basic 480p quality. For watching YouTube videos, the Android TV version only shows up to 720p resolution with no HDR feature. For mirroring your Android or iOS devices, it comes with Miracast for Android and AirPlay for iPhones and iOS devices. I'm using Android, so to mirror my mobile phone, simply open the Miracast option, and on my Android casting app, scan for the Y1 projector and peer to it. One of the good things about this projector is that with its Android operating system, you can install any one of the popular media players such as VLC and MX player and play 4K HDR videos and downscale them to 1080p with the exception of AV1 videos for which there are no decoders. Here's my list of 4K HDR videos and let's check its display quality and smoothness of playback.
so some of the more easier 4K HDR videos played smoothly without issues, while some of the more difficult ones like the jellyfish video, the soccer video had some difficulty. It even played an HLG HDR video smoothly at the end there. For those who would like to use their official streaming device via HDMI such as the Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire TV Stick or Cube or your Roku device, here I'm watching Netflix on the Google Chromecast and it plays in 1080p HDR display, but unfortunately I'm not getting any audio. This is the latest third generation Amazon Fire TV Cube which is more compatible with this projector. With the Cube you can watch Netflix in 4K HDR display with audio and the same for the Prime Video Service. Years of deep cover at Apex Cybernetics, I'm finally taking my shot. Something bad is going on here. I don't know what it is, but I'm about to walk in and download hard evidence and expose a vast corporate conspiracy. If you would like to enjoy some Android gaming or you are looking to connect your gaming console to this projector, here is a look at what its 3D rendering looks like. And just for reference, here is a look at its hardware performance on the Antutu benchmark. For fan noise, when set to auto, the fan generates only 41 decibels which is one of the quietest in the industry. In summary, the selling point of this projector as I mentioned at the beginning of this video I cannot show and you have to research it for yourself to understand why I am restricted from doing so and why in this video I can only review its hardware and performance. With that said, its Android operating system is open and allows you to install or sideload any app you like. Its focus adjustment, though it's not the force feedback type, it's easy to adjust to achieve the finest focus. In terms of picture quality and brightness, depending on where you point this projector, you can get a very clear picture, brightness lumens and very sharp edges. The projector screen used in this review is a metallic anti-glare high contrast projector cloth that enhances your display even in well lit rooms, which means you don't have to turn off the lights to get a clear picture. If you would like to get your hands on one, see the link in the description below this video. Where this model is lacking is in its digital rights management where it does not have a Netflix ESN certification or Google Widevine Level 1 to show premium paid subscription services in HD or 4K limiting it to only 480p resolution. You can however play services using your official streaming devices connected to its HDMI port. Its RAM size is very low only 2GB and its CPU is only clocked at 1.5GHz to manage heat, so its interface tends to feel a bit slow when opening and closing apps compared to Android boxes. Another issue is that I couldn't find any brightness, contrast or color adjustments in its menu. Maybe it's hidden somewhere and I couldn't find it, but I searched thoroughly and couldn't find any. So my final recommendation is somewhat blind to some given that I couldn't show the selling point of this model only to say that when you do your own research I can guarantee you that what you are paying for is good. So friends that brings to an end this review. If you did your research and you are interested in what this projector has to offer then you can get it at the lowest price possible using the link in the description below this video where you can also take advantage of some discount coupons. So give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation, if this is the first time viewing then be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell before leaving to keep in the loop when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.